As you know by now, AI has burst onto the scene of 3D. So in today's video, I want to focus on how it is promising to speed up texture creation that traditionally took artists many hours. Instead of hand painting every detail or building materials node by node, you can now type a prompt or snap a photo and let some algorithms do the heavy lifting, or so they say. Here is the interesting thing. Today's AI texture generation lineup is pretty stacked. Adobe Substance 3D Sampler now has a beta texture texture feature using Firely AI, which converts a text prompt into a seamless texture, which you can turn into a PBR material. How interesting is that? There are stable Diffusion XL based generators that can spit out tileable images from prompts. For example, plugins like Dream Textures for Blender or services like Scenario and Polycam, just to name a few. These systems leverage diffusion models, which is, by the way, the same tech behind, you know, AI art generators, but adapted to produce textures. You also have material generator tools integrated into 3D software. Chaos V-Ray's AI material generator is one of them. It lets you upload a real-world photo and automatically generate a material with PBR texture maps. You know, things like albedo, normal, roughness, etc. All of that from the photo. In a similar fashion, D5 renders AI actually promises turning any reference image into a production-ready material, complete with base color, accurate roughness, and normal maps. As you can see, this is actually a far cry from the old days of laborious painting maps in Photoshop. Meanwhile, traditional methods are still around, and they are doing most of the heavy lifting, because this AI stuff is new to be honest. And the thing is, artists usually combine these new AI stuff with the traditional pipeline of creating textures and materials. As you know, photogrammetry remains the gold standard for realism and procedural material creation using tools such as Substance Designer, which can give you as an artist a limited control. Hand painting in software such as Substance Painter or even Photoshop is also alive and doing really well, especially for stylized art. These classic approaches can be time consuming, as you know, but they give highly tailored results. AI tools, on the other hand, trade some control for speed and variety. So as an artist, you are no longer constrained per se or limited by texture libraries because you can actually generate surfaces on demand. But here is the catch. You might not get exactly what's in your head, especially on the first try. In practice, many artists mix and match, using AI to get a quick pace, for inspiration that is, then refining it with traditional techniques. A critical aspect of production ready materials is actually PBR accuracy. You see, in a physically based rendering or PBR workflow, each texture map, you know, stuff like diffuse, normals, roughness, etc., must be physically plausible and work together under lighting. Early AI image generators often produce pretty pictures with lighting baked in, which is great for things like concept art, but not so great for game textures, for example. And modern AI texture tools are much more aware of that, I mean the PBR requirements. For example, Adobe's Image to Material uses a machine learning model to recognize shapes and objects and accurately generate the normal, height, and roughness maps as well as to get rid of the shadows or highlights, especially in the base color. In other words, it delights the source image, or I can simply say removing bake lighting so that the albedo is clean and flat. The AI also predicts plausible surface details. It figures out what a bump or a dent would look like as a normal map, where the shiny versus matte areas are, or where they should be, for roughness, etc. Kyos's AI material generator does something similar. It can auto-correct the perspective of your photo, removing the lighting influences, and even make the texture seamlessly tileable for you. These are all tasks a human would normally have to do, manually that is, in Photoshop or Substance for instance. And now, it is handled by AI in just seconds, with varying degrees of success of course, because for the moment, and for the foreseeable future, it is still a gray area. In practice, the quality of these generated maps is surprisingly good. Scenario Steam, for instance, claims their model understands how light interacts with materials like wood or stone, and converts that into coherent PBR texture maps that behave naturally under real-time lighting. In demos, 
AI generated materials do in fact respond correctly when you shine a light on them in a 3D viewer, and rough areas kind of look dull. Metal bits shine, bumps catch lighting as they should, and so on. That being said, it is not magic. Sometimes AI's guesswork isn't perfect. You might get a normal map that is a bit off, or roughness map that needs tuning. Physically based also means respecting real-world ranges. As an example, not making an albedo brighter than real materials would be, and not all AI outputs will automatically obey those conventions. So, while AI outputs are usually a great starting point, a discerning eye might still adjust levels or fix small inconsistencies to get a truly polished result. So, are AI tools ready to replace texture artists and traditional workflows entirely? Or are they best used as smart assistants? The consensus so far leads towards the latter. I mean, we have seen some tools that can do texture and magic at this point, with varying degrees of success, and with some limitations, of course. But here's the thing. Current AI tools excel at kicking out quick results that are often, I would say, 60-80% to of the way to what you would need, but that last 40-20%, to making it perfect, unique, and optimized, especially for your specific project, often still requires an artist's touch. Generally speaking, most AI-generated textures would need to be edited before being put in production, due to some artifacts with the AI image basically serving as a base that still requires human tweaking. You know, things like painting extra maps, fixing seams, etc. In other words, you can save time on the grunt work, but finishing a truly production-ready asset usually means jumping into the polishing mode to correct what AI gave you. Moreover, if a project has unique art style or very specific requirements, a generic AI model often cannot fulfill those out especially out of the box, so you still have to do the manual work, sometimes entirely. AI tends to do best with things it's seen a lot of, like common materials where its training came from. A very stylized or brand new look might confuse it or just come out looking wrong. In those cases, an artist's skill is actually irreplaceable. Even Adobe frames their generation texture feature as a way to explore ideas quickly without replacing existing workflows. Because you know what, they have a software, or actually two software, or maybe more, that artists are paying for to make textures. And many people and studios in the industry are using them. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to use AI to kill their software. Just think about that. So the idea is to iterate faster, not to skip the art department completely. Many AI texture generators themselves encourage an interactive approach. You generate something, then you can refine it or try variations, possibly feeding back into the manual workflow. One AI toolmaker pointed out their system handles the heavy lifting, but you still direct the finish in addition to the style as an artist. This suggests that the ideal world of AI, especially right now, is just a collaborator or an assistant rather than an autonomous creator. I hope you get the point. In production scenarios today, AI-generated textures are already useful and sometimes game-changing, but usually as part of a hybrid workflow. I would say this is almost always the case. For environment artists in general, or game developers in particular, these tools can rapidly reduce base materials for things like walls, floors, grounds, fabric, etc. You know the drill, which you can then tweak or blend as needed. They are fantastic for prototyping and filling out large worlds, but you need a lot of textures fast. We are seeing AI-made textures used in production for background assets or to augment libraries, especially when timelines are tight. However, for hero assets or very art-directed pieces, studios are still cautious. An AI texture might form the foundation, but an experienced texture artist will refine the details, ensure consistency with the project's look, and optimize the maps for the engine. It is a bit like having an apprentice, and this is what I personally always say to people about AI. The AI does the first pass, and you see what it got right and what it messed up. And you as a master or a senior artist, or the one working on the project, you do the final pass. The exciting part for me is how quickly the tech is evolving, especially with the boring parts that most of us don't want to do. 
so each new model or tool seems to close the gap in quality and control. It feels like the floodgates are opened for using AI in texturing and asset creation in general, and as you can see, the possibilities seem infinite. I'm not that pessimistic. We are not at the point yet where you would fire the texture painter and let an AI handle everything, but we are at a point where those painters or painting software have some amazing new superpowers. My two cents are something like this. AI textures are ready to help you work faster and inspire new ideas, but you still steer the ship to ensure the final materials meet your production standards. So it is less about outright replacement and more about integration, which means letting the AI generate the boring stuff on the first draft, so you as an artist can spend more and more time on the cool and creative stuff that truly brings a project to life. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.